Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. The other day I upgraded the recording drive on my production system here from a one terabyte NVMe, the Samsung one, to a four terabyte drive that I got at a very good price during the Prime Day sale. And one of the fun things about these NVMe drives is that you can repurpose them for some other use with an external enclosure. And the folks from Pluggable sent me this one to check out. This is their USB 3.1 Gen 2 NVMe SSD enclosure. I already opened the box up during a live stream I was doing with them the other day. And this device basically takes the drive and turns it into an external one that you can plug in via a USB port. You're gonna lose performance, especially because a lot of these NVMe drives are super fast, but you get the convenience. And if you were looking to migrate from one drive to the other, you can put the old drive in this, move your files over, and then put it in something else after you get your files secured onto the new drive. So a lot of utility for this, and it's not all that expensive. So what we're gonna do in this video is install this in, in this and see how it performs, and then we'll uh, see if we can uh, get some more use out of this drive. And it's not all that expensive either. So we're gonna get that drive installed into this thing in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Pluggable. However, this is not a sponsored review, nor are they reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this drive enclosure is all about. Now the price point on this right now is about $30, not all that expensive. In the box, you get the enclosure itself. This is designed to be very rapidly reusable in the sense that you can pop out a drive and put a new one in, but it is metal here, so it's got a decent heat sink around it, and then it snaps together. No tools are required, as you'll see in a minute, so you don't have to have any screws around or anything else. You just pop it in that little rubber gasket there, and I'll show you the whole process in a second. You also get two flavors of USB cables. You've got a USB-C to C and a USB-C to A, so it'll work on the older and larger USB-A connectors in addition to your USB Type-C connectors. Remember, though, that this is a 3.1 Gen 2 drive, meaning its maximum theoretical speed is 10 gigabits per second, and you'll get a lot less than that in practice. Thunderbolt drives are a lot quicker, um, but you don't have as much compatibility necessarily. So uh, it'll be good enough for data migration, but if you wanted something that really takes advantage of what these can do, a Thunderbolt enclosure along with a PC that supports Thunderbolt would be the way, the, would be the way to go. Uh, in here, we also have some little heat transfer stickers that we're going to put on the drive before we install it. And this helps connect the top of the drive here to the back of the case here to get that heat going to the heat sink. And what you wanna do this because these drives can get pretty warm and every drive behaves differently under temperature. So a lot of them will throttle down if they sense that they're getting too hot. So the best thing that you can do is really improve the chances of heat transfer from the drive to the casing here. In this case, we'll get warm because it's metal, but it's designed to get warm in the process. Additionally, you've got a couple of extra little rubber things here for where the drive gets installed. So why don't we take out my terabyte drive here and pop it in. Now what's interesting is that this drive is about three years old at this point, and it's had a lot of rights to it because I've recorded to it for just about every video you've seen here on the channel over the last three years, but the utility software for it reports that it's still quite healthy. So it's, uh, it's been a good drive and I don't wanna stop using it. So what we're gonna do here is just slide this in to the slot and then you just push this down over that rubber gasket there to secure it in place. And that is pretty much it. Although what I am gonna do here is attach these stickers to give it that temperature transfer. So let me get these stickers unstuck here and we'll get this attached to the drive. And it does cover up your nice branding there, but again, I think you wanna get a little heat transfer going on here. So we'll put these on and then we'll slide it all back together. Now, in order to put it back together properly, you wanna look for these arrows here at the top of both the drive section here and the metal casing. I was making a mistake earlier. I was putting it back together backwards and it goes in this way, but it doesn't lock the enclosure together. So what you do is make sure that these two arrows are pointing at each other and just slide them back until they meet. And when they meet, they'll click and now you can't get back into it unless you 
flick the switch here to unlock it and reopen it. So there you go. All right, so this drive is now assembled and we've turned that internal drive into an external one. And now what I'm gonna do is attach it to a computer and let's see how the drive performs. All right, so I've got this Yoga 9i out on the desk. This is on loan from Lenovo for a review we'll be doing soon. And this machine has two USB-C Thunderbolt ports here on the side, so we're going to connect the drive to one of those. And I'm going to use the included USB-C to USB-C cable here. And we're just going to attach it to the USB-C Thunderbolt port here on the left-hand side. And now that that drive is connected, hopefully we will see, there it is, uh, we'll see my recording drive pop up. And these are all the files that I have on the drive. And remember yesterday this was inside my production computer and now it is inside the enclosure but it's still giving me all my files here which is great so that is a good starting point the drive seems to work now let's take a look and see how it performs now the first test we're going to run on here is the black magic disk speed test this is a sequential test that will measure how fast we can read and write to the drive and as you can see here we're writing at about 950 megabytes per second and we're reading at about the same rate. This is pretty close to what the theoretical maximum would be on one of these USB enclosures given the limitations of USB and the overhead. And what I want to do is let this test run out for a few minutes and see what impact the frequent reading and writing has on temperature to see if this drive is going to throttle itself down at all. You're not going to get any kind of warning, it's just going to start running a little bit slower. Uh, one thing you'll note is that the enclosure itself will get warm to the touch as it heats up. That is normal. That's how this is supposed to work. The heat from inside is supposed to go to the outside. So I wouldn't worry about it being too warm. I would just keep an eye on the performance here. And as you can see, we started at around 950, and you saw how that read just took a little bit of a dip. Sometimes that is the result of some thermal throttling. But like I said, let's let this run out for about five minutes or so, and let's see how it's doing when we come back after a little bit of a break here. So hang on, when I switch back, we'll see exactly how this is doing five minutes later. All right, so we are just at the five minute mark here, maybe just afterward, and it's pretty much holding its performance. It's got a little bit of a variation on each test run, but generally it's pretty consistent, well above 900 megabytes per second on both the reads and the writes, and that's what we were looking for here. The casing is definitely warm to the touch here, and that's a good thing, as I mentioned. So it's good to see that uh, the heat is making its way to the outside of the casing here, and overall the performance here is good. Now, your mileage will vary, though, because the NVMe that you're putting inside of the case that you have might be different than the NVMe I put inside of mine. So some drives do a little better than others when you're stressing them out, but at least this Samsung Evo here is performing as you see on screen. The next thing I'm gonna run on here real quick is the uh, crystal disk mark test to get a feel for its random read and write performance. I'm gonna run that now and show you the results when that test concludes. All right, so the crystal disk mark test concluded and the results on the sequential reads and writes were very consistent with what we saw on the black magic test. Those are these two numbers up here. The ones below it are the random reads and writes that this test does that the black magic test does not and i was very pleased with the results here certainly you don't get as much performance reading and writing to the drive randomly as you do sequentially but check out this chart where i compare our pluggable slash samsung combo to some of the other drives we have looked at recently now at the top of the list is a thunderbolt drive and the Thunderbolt drive delivers performance closer to what you would get with an NVMe drive inside of a computer. But below that are all the comparatives to some of the other USB-C drives we have tested recently, including the SanDisk Extreme Pro and the Samsung T7. And as you work your way down the list there, you can see that this DIY solution is performing competitively and in some cases better, especially on random reads and writes, than some of those other SSDs we have looked at that plug in over USB. Now again, your mileage will vary based on what drive you're putting inside, but it looks like the controller on this is pretty good and is able to squeeze as much performance out of the drive you have in there as the USB bus will allow. So this was a very nice outcome here, even though it's not as fast as what it would be inside a Thunderbolt enclosure or inside a computer itself.
So altogether, I was very pleased with the performance I saw out of this enclosure. And this is a great way to keep using an old drive after you've upgraded to a new one, or if you're looking for a quick and easy way to migrate one drive to the other. And because it's toolless, you can very easily swap drives in and out. Just be sure to unplug it first before you pull drives out of this thing. It is not hot swappable. From a compatibility standpoint, here on the back of the box, they list what is compatible. NVMe M2 2280, 2260, 2242, and 2230. Some of those M2 SATA drives are not going to work with this. It is strictly the NVMe stuff. But uh, if you got one of those drives and you're doing an upgrade, I think this is a good way to keep that old drive going after you swap it out. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and I'm the Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.